Hi, welcome back to Country Basket Weaving. I'm your hostess, Sandy Atkinson. Today we're going to be working on a Nantucket light ship basket. And this is a sample that was sent to me by Scott Gilbert out of Kentucky. He's using some wooden ears on this one. This is an 8-inch basket. He's also put a spiral on here, which I've duplicated on one of my smaller ones. But this is a beautiful, beautiful basket. We're going to be working on a 6-inch one today. And your material and cut pattern that you're going to need is as follows. You're going to need one 6-inch Nantucket light chip mold, one wood base, quarter inch flat oval. You're going to cut 55 pieces at 5 and 5 8 inches. Fine, fine cane, some common cane, 3 8 inch split reed. You will also need some brass escutcheon pins two brass ears, one 6-inch Nantucket light ship basket handle, two 3 quarter inch copper rivets with washers. Okay, when you get your mold, and you can usually rent these or purchase them, you can buy these um, kits to put these together in. There's a lot of different ways to go. You could even make your own if you're that ambitious. Uh, the base here is a wood base. It has a decorative, or some of them do have this decorative uh, circles on it. And the choice is yours whether you want those up or down. I've kind of done them both ways today. This is simply going to screw on the base. Some of the molds will come with uh, wing nuts and some of them will come with screws. And you're going to just screw that on there. And we're also going to need a rubber band to put around this to hold everything down as we get going too. Okay, I'm going to take this one out because I need it over here. I only have three molds to work with today. So I'm going to put this one back on it, and we'll talk about that one later. But I did want to show you how to put the base on. You're going to cut 55 of these stabs, and what I do is come in here with a sharp knife. This one's 5 and 5 8 inches long, and about an inch and a half up, I'm going to start whittling this down. I don't want a drastic uh, change here. I want it to be very gradual. So I'm going to take my time with each one of these, whittle this down, and I want it to be about half the size of the, as it is up here. As I do each one of these, and you have a lot of these to do, as you do each one, try to be real consistent in size. I know that's really hard to do but it'll make for a nicer basket. Now take um, a sander, either sanding paper or a sanding pad, and you're going to sand this all down. And I'm going to especially sand in here where I've whittled it. I sand both sides all the way to the end. Get off any of these little hairs. I just like to start with a nice smooth piece, nicely tapered and sanded. Okay, then I just dip it in water. I don't like to soak these too long. And then I'm just going to insert it in here. If you notice on the base, there is a cut here, a groove in here, and that's where the pieces go. And then I just put it under my rubber band. Normally I would do this uh, and let it set overnight to dry and to take the shape of the mold. That rubber band down there does that. To start out, you're going to take a piece of your fine, fine cane, and I have wet this, and it's getting tangled on me, but we'll go ahead and work with it tangled on the bottom. And I'm going to take this piece, first of all, we need to space these evenly in here, as evenly as you can get them. You may have to do some adjustments. This basket does take a long time to do. You just need to take your time and do a good job on it. In between these stabs, I'm going to place my caning, and I'm placing it with the wrong side up. I'm going to bring it across the next spoke to it, or the next stab to it. And then I'm going to weave under. Now there's two ways to do this. You can either work with the rubber band on, or because we have let this set overnight to dry and take shape, you can remove the rubber band. You'll probably have some fallout. So you just work with it. The first two rows, I think, are the most difficult to do. And it's an over-under weave. You may need a little tool, a knitting needle or some type of a tool, to work that up in there. 
keep everything nice and tight. And for time's sake, I'm probably not going to be able to finish this row because it does take a lot of time just adjusting everything in. If you have one fall out, simply put it back in. Because I have an odd number of stabs, when I come around here, it's going to take me automatically to an opposite weave. So I can go around and around, nonstop. Then I want you, as you work this, I must be caught, there we go. As you work this around, it gets much easier when, once you get around this little bend here, or until you get about four rows in, and then it goes much easier. Of course, the farther down the mold you get, the easier it gets too, because they're a little bit farther apart and everything is locked in tight. Keeps falling out here. So work that around that way. Weave this until you're one inch from the top of your mold. And I'm going to go to that basket now. And on this one, these are beautiful molds. I love the little handle on them. On this one, I have this worked to the top, almost one inch from it. But I stop there because I want to show you how to add a piece. I'm going to take another length of my fine, fine cane. And where it ended, right here, I cut it off on top. Make sure you're always on top. And then I'm simply going to come back here, back four, add my piece under my, behind my fourth spoke back. We've, I'm holding it there with my finger. Weave right on top of the piece that ran out and keep right on going. You need to fit things in. But see how much easier it is to weave once you get away from that base. When I get one inch from the top of my mold, I need to add my ears. And here I have two brass ears. If these are too large for the basket you're working on, these can be clipped or, or trimmed down. What I need to do is look at my basket and find my two centers or find a center that's straight across. And remember, you have an odd number, so you're going to have more spokes on one, one more spoke on one side than on the other. I'm pretty good at eyeballing it. After you find your stakes, then go ahead and count either side and make sure you have the center there. This is going to insert on the outside. Well, let me choose these over here where I'm at my weaving. Right about here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that one because that's the one I want to put a, my brass ear on. Remember to keep everything pulled down. This is a very tightly woven basket. Pull everything as you work real tight. I'm going to lay that brass ear on there and I'm going to begin weaving this in. When I get to the other side, I'm going to do the very same thing. I do like to hide my end. So when I come around with my next two or three rows, I may adjust this ear a little bit so that it, my end is not showing. I don't like to see those ends out. And continue weaving around. Okay, you're going to weave and, uh, around. You're going to add your ear on the other side. And then I'm going to go to the next basket because I've already done that. Here I'm up at the top. I have my brass ears woven in, both of them there, opposite here. Okay, now, I need, if you notice, this is the one I took off. I'm going to shove it back in a little bit. If you notice, my, my tips of my quarter inch is sticking out. And we need it like that because we're going to start working on our rim. And the rim is out of the 3 8 inch split reed. And I'm going to take and I'm going to make sure I got the right piece here. Okay, this is my outside piece. Actually, the rim fits above the weaving. It fits on these pieces that are sticking up, the tips here. I'm going to work this around and give it about four inch overlap, holding it nice and tight. I'm just going to approximate four inches here, and I'm going to get it, cut it right off. Then I'm going to come in here, and I like to work on a towel. And generally, at home or, or in the studio that I work in, I work on my lap, but here I'll work on the towel here. I'm going to come back about four. It, first, I'm going to mark it. Sorry about that. Let's come in here, and I'm going to mark 
pulling it as tight as I can get it. I'm going to mark where this end hits and where this end hits. Then I know exactly where to start my whittling. Here's my top one. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to whittle this down very cautiously. And as I get to this end, I want to get thinner and thinner. I'm going to take my time. Then I can come back here. If uh, Another tool that works real well if you have one is a, uh, a Stanley Sheer Foam Shaver. That works very well. Some type of a shaver or a plane. That works very well too. See how I've gotten that thinner and thinner? It actually could be a little bit thinner on the end there. Then as I bring this other end around, I need to shave the back end. So going to the reverse side, let me make my pencil mark so I can see it on the other side to know exactly where I'm to start. And I'm going to start shaving this one down. I'm going to do the very same thing. I'm going to get thinner as I go out. Now you can take your time when you're at home working on these and do a really nice shaving job. Get yours nice and thin. Now, on this piece that I'm, I'm whittling on the back, I'm going to come around to the sides here and I'm going to very carefully whittle this down on here. Both sides. And again, your shaver will work good on this. Or if you're really good at whittling, this is a good way to do it too. And I like to make my tip round. So I'm going to start rounding it with my knife. But I'm also going to come in and start sanding that down. Your rims are going to take a while to make. Just take your time with them. OK. Actually, this could be a little thinner. But I want to show you, I just come in here and start sanding everything down. Work on that tip and get that tip round. Come back here. You're going to do a little bit more sanding than what I'm doing. And you're going to sand this one down also. Place it back on your mold. And make sure you're overlapping. Now I can see from this one my tip is a little bit too far, so I can come in here and I'm going to clip that off. Make sure it's on there nice and tight. Come in here and clip this off, and then I'm going to whittle it down some more so that it's almost paper thin on the end. When I get that exactly where I want it and just make some more adjustments, then come in with some wood glue, and you're going to glue this together. There is a very quick setting glue on the market. You may want to investigate that. It sets within like five minutes. OK, when you do this, then you're going to hook this. And I use clothespins, several of them, to clothespin this together. Now my ends, keep in mind, should have been a little more thin thinned out. Okay, we're going to let that dry all night. Of course, I've already done that. You're going to build another inner rim the very same way, except remember that the flat side is going to face the basket. And these I glued together. And the glue has dried. And I'm going to come back in here, and I'm going to start sanding this and give it a good sanding. Once you learn to do these quite well, you won't even be able to see where your two pieces are glued together. On this one, I can see where they're glued, so I know that I need to do some sanding on this rim. But we're going to pretend like we did that and it's all ready to go. We're going to place the rim on the outside of the basket. In fact, I think it would be easier at this point if I pulled it off the mold. And then I'm going to work this around my basket. And at the bottom of the rim is going to just be on top of that last row of weaving. And 
Now, as you can see, some of my pieces of my, the tips of my stabs are on the top, are sticking out, so I simply come back and I'm going to trim these off. Okay, we're going to take some time and do that. Then I'm going to work on my inside rim. This one is not very round. I, I would really go ahead and replace this one. Because you want them to be nice and round. And you're going to fit that one in the inside, even with the outside one. And go ahead and clamp them on. Like I said, this, out, this inside rim is not very round. Not quite sure what happened to it, but I would go ahead and replace it. Then go ahead and cut off your tips. We don't want any of these showing. And I have quite a few that are longer. Now we're going to start, we're going to attach this, and we attach it with these tiny brass pins. And I have a few of them here. And this is where you're going to need a drill. There is a very tiny drill bit that you need. And I think I'm going to move to this basket because I've already done this. I have left one. When you put in your, your pins, make sure they're even. Keep them in a nice straight line. You're going to drill right through your brass ear, through the wood, through the brass ear, and that's what holds that in. So do that to both of them. And skip about every other one. I have one here that I'm going to drill. These bits are very delicate, so be very careful when you drill them. I'm going to line it up and make sure that I'm going to go through my staff. I'm going to insert my pin. Now I really drilled that one a little bit too low. It's offline. But you can be real careful and do yours straight. Come in here, and if there's a tip on there, you can cut that tip off with some wire cutters. And then very carefully with your ball preen hammer, Come in here, and I'm working on wood. Now, I really need to be working on a piece of metal, and that spoke weight works real good for that. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to very gently tap that, tap that nail down. Try to have your, your ends going all in one direction. It just makes it look very, you know, a lot nicer. Okay, next step is... We're going to go ahead and lash this. And again, I'm using my fine caning to lash. And I'm using a piece of common cane for a filler to fill in this here, to fill in my work under here. I'm going to insert my common cane from the inside, take the end of it, and work it up between the inside basket rim and the basket. And it just needs to work up in there a little bit. You may need a tool to very gently open that up and s insert that end up in there. Okay, when you get it up in there, bring this end around. Of course, you're going to have to straighten this all out. tangles on you. And then, very carefully, you're going to open up underneath, between your, your ribs here, and insert that end down in there. The lashing is basically the same way we lash everything. The starting is a little bit different, and the ending is different. Okay, we're going to pull this. I'm going to go ahead and loop this again. Now, I've seen Nantucket's lash two ways, skipping every other one or going ahead and putting it in every one. So that's kind of up to you. I'm going to go ahead and put, go between each one of my ribs here. I'm going to do about four of them. 
And I see I'm having trouble sticky, having that end stay there, so I'm going to show you another way to end it, or to begin it, which is really the same way that I'm going to end it. Put this in here. Coming back here, here's my piece that doesn't want to stay for me today. So I'm simply going to lay it between my loops here and come back and tighten up my loops. And get a hold of the right one. Here we go. And then when I tighten up my loops, it's going to hold that end in there. Sometimes that's an easier way to start. Go ahead and pull these. We need to create our handle here. So I'm going, I think you've got the idea for the lashing. And I'm having trouble getting it in there. There we go. And then that would hold that if I keep going. We need to fit our handle on our brass ears, so we're going to pretend like this lashing is done. One thing I forgot to show you. With the common cane, once I get this going, this piece, I'm going to butt it up over here at my ear, kind of give myself a measurement, and start working this piece in to cover up that to cover up the, the work in between my rims. You can see that? I'll show you the sample here where Scott's done this very neatly. Okay, once you understand that, we need to add our handle. I've already drilled my holes on this handle. The handles come pre-shaped, beautifully made. We're going to insert them. There's a groove here. Insert that in your ear. And on the same way over here, your ear inserts in between the wood pieces. Give it about a quarter of an inch up. I'm sorry, about, well, between an eighth and a quarter of an inch up. And make sure the handle is going to swing neatly. And then you're going to do some eyeballing here. Taking your pencil, you're going to move this handle out very carefully until you can see that hole. Eyeball the hole straight across and in the middle of your ear. And that's where I know I need to drill. You can do the same thing on the other side. Make sure they're the same height. And go ahead and eyeball that across and figure out where you're going to drill that hole. Then I use a 1 8 drill bit, and I'm not going to show you that today, but you simply use the 1 8 inch drill bit and drill your hole through there. Once you have done that, then you're going to place, and I'm going to place this one on because I've already done it, place my rivet through here, line up my holes. And this will probably take a minute while you find that hole to line it up. Put your rivet through. Oops, first I need a washer, don't I? I'm going to put my washer on first, then line it up and put my rivet through. Your rivet's going to stick out a little bit, so you're going to have to cut it off if I can ever get it through there. I see it coming. There, I got that one in. We'll push that one through. Okay, now we need to come in here and with some wire cutters, we're going to come in here and we're going to snip that rivet off next to the wood. And then I'm going to use my ball preen hammer up here. And I'm going to mushroom that out so that rivet won't come out. And then just repeat that step on the other side of the basket, and that's going to hold that handle in. We need to take a plug here, and we're going to insert it. And these come in the kits if you buy a kit, or you could use a lot of different things to plug it in here. Use your hammer and tap it down in there. Cut it off even with a basket and sand it down. You're going to have to sand it down inside too and make sure it's even there. And then um, your basket's pretty well finished. You can, you can stain the handle if you like lightly or you could uh, put some coat of shellac on it. There's beautiful Nantuckets on the market, uh, some of them with, of course, the, the scrimshaw and the whalebone, and you'll see different types of uh, ears on here. But this is a basket that it's just beautiful, but it does take time to make this one. The basket that we'll be working on next week is a treasure bowl, also made on a mold. And we're going to have fun with this one. Lots of ideas, some new uh, weaves to show you, and we'll look for you next week. Thank you.